My name is Diana Othman. Uh, I am the media coordinator for American Muslims for Palestine Chicago. Um, we are here today to speak on behalf of AMP Chicago and AMP National, the host of the 16th Annual Convention for Palestine in the U.S. Um, I recently traveled to Gaza in June and July of this past summer. Uh, so I'd like to begin by just reading a few messages from family members uh, who have communicated with me throughout the past 40 odd days um, of the Israeli aggression on Gaza. We haven't had bread in four days due to the chaos at Shifat Hospital where my family and I had been sheltering since our displacement of our homes and our further displacement. We have waited in lines and gotten nothing. We spent the, the walks to the bakeries praying the entire night and praying that we would make it back. As we got back without our bread, we found an artillery shell that landed right in front of us. Luckily, we were at a crossroads and we were able to crouch behind the wall, but all around us were people making their last rites and screaming. I, how could a mortar shell even scare us when we have a master's degree and constant warfare by now. We are not okay. We have no dreams and nothing remains. We only pray that we come out of this alive with our bodies intact, with our families alongside us, without having to lose anyone or any of us dying ourselves. That is all we dream of. God is sufficient for us and he is the best disposer of our affairs. This is the first time in my life that I feel closest to death. It is all around me, but I don't see it. Death can kidnap me at any moment now without me realizing it. We are living the most difficult and cruel days of our lives, and yet we still feel forsaken in our loneliness. We lived alone and we die in groups. Here in Gaza, the stench of death permeates all, and there is no way for us to escape it except through death. I'd like to now call on the chairman of our board, Dr. Hatem Bazian, to speak. The uh, item that I want to focus on is the Convention on Genocide. Uh, the term has been deployed relative to uh, the current Israeli war on the Palestinians and Gaza. Article 2 of the Convention of Gen Genocide highlights the following. One is acts committed with intent. Uh, from the Israeli leadership, uh, President Herzog, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, the Defense Minister, and a variety of ministers have expressed intent uh, to obliterate, uh, to level, uh, to create a parking lot, a soccer field, and also the intent of not having accuracy, uh, but destruction. Uh, this indicate that there is intent from the Israeli uh, leadership uh, to commit acts of genocide against the Palestinians. Often people mistaken the question of genocide with the total elimination or killing of a group, which is not the case. Uh, the Article 2 says, killing members of the group, uh, causing serious bodily uh, or, in, or mental harm to members of the group, deliberately inflicting uh, on the group conditions uh, of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group, and then lastly, forcefully transferring children of the group to another group. So often people mistake in genocide with an idea that the elimination of the totality of the population is what is intended, uh, it is not the case. Uh, all indications from Gaza is that the Israeli uh, government and leadership, and sadly to say with the support of a segment of U.S. leadership, uh, have been engaged in uh, genocide. Now, why is it important uh, that genocide is being uh, called for Palestine at this particular time? Is that the contracting party on the conventions of genocide, as well as the four Geneva Convention, are obligated 
uh, to act when such uh, genocides are unfolding. Uh, this was the case with uh, Bosnia uh, as well as the Rwandan genocide. Uh, the United States has been resistance as well as uh, uh, Western European countries. Uh, but it is within the uh, parameters for an act for acts of genocide to be defined and we call upon the United States to fulfill its obligation under the four Geneva Convention and the uh, articles of the Genocide Convention. Uh, lastly, uh, there are many in civil society uh, in the United States that have filed lawsuits uh, uh, directed at uh, President Biden and uh, the political leadership, uh, accusing them uh, of complicity in acts of genocide, which I may say uh, that the media itself uh, can be held responsible. Uh, in I Article 3, Section C, uh, direct and public incitement to commit genocide, uh, many in the U.S. and Western media have taken and reported directly as embedded journalists uh, with the Israeli military, which violates the basic ethics uh, of journalist, uh, the journalistic enterprise. And they have actually been caught in outlined, uh, outright lying about some of the instances, including Al Shifa Hospital. Uh, the uh, calls and the lawsuits that have been filed also have been accompanied by a number of countries, uh, five countries, that have filed also international claims with the International Criminal Court. Uh, collectively taken together, uh, we're uh, uh, calling for uh, the uh, designation of what is undertaking in uh, Gaza as an act of genocide and begin to take those responsible uh, for their crimes that are being committed against the Palestinian. If I may add uh, that we call as uh, AMP for immediate and cutting of all aid to Israel, uh, we are uh, uh, completely opposed to using our tax money uh, to fund and having anything to do with acts of genocide. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to call on the executive director and board member of American Muslims for Palestine, Dr. Usama Abu Rashid. Hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Osama Aburshed, O-S-A-M-A, -A. last name is A-B-U space I-R-S-H-A-I-D, and I'm the executive director of the American Muslims for Palestine. I want to um, draw attention to parallels between what is unfolding now in terms of uh, human tragedy, war crimes in the Gaza Strip, and here in America. What we are dealing with now is a dehumanization attempt in the Gaza Strip of the Palestinian victims and of the Palestinian people, while those who try to amplify their voices here in the United States are being demonized. They're being called sympathizers of terrorism, with terrorism, or terrorists themselves, and there are attempts to criminalize their voices. So, a genocide is taking place in Gaza, as Dr. Hatim just explained. This is a genocide. It fits the definition, the international definition, the legal definition of genocide. But also what we're dealing with here is a new era of McCarthyism. And we have to draw the parallels where when you have a minority who are in power, think that they can censor, criminalize, intimidate, deter those who practice their First Amendment, those who speak for human rights, those who are on the side of the, of the, 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 uh, the majority of uh, the American majority, because we're not the um, marginal voices here in America. Consecutive polls suggest that the majority of Americans, an overwhelming majority of Americans, are for an immediate and complete ceasefire. Uh, consecutive polls suggest that there is a growing sympathy with the Palestinian people here in America and with their plight and aspiration. And there is an uh, overwhelming majority that stands for the freedom of expression in America. 
So if we continue with these attempts to criminalize, to censor voices who try to amplify the Palestinian voices, we're doing a huge disservice to this country and to the, to the values of this country that we claim to, hear, uh, to, uh, uh, to hold dearly. The First Amendment, the right to uh, assembly, the right to protest, the right to dissent, these are values, these are values that we, again, cherish in this country, or at least we claim. Yesterday, the president uh, uh, spoke in a press conference about the, um, the hostage or the prisoners uh, exchange. If you followed carefully uh, what he was saying, basically he was humanizing the Israeli sites, the Israeli hostages, which, of course, their humanity is given. It emanates from God. It doesn't uh, come from Biden or his recognition of it or the United States recognition. They are created human beings and they deserve all of the respect and dignity. But he mentioned nothing about the suffering of the Palestinian people and the suffering of the Palestinian prisoners. We're talking about women. We're talking about children who have been in prison for months and years now and the majority of them without charges, without charges, administrative detention as they call it. So for Mr. Biden and for the U.S. government, they replied their suffering, their human rights have no meaning. While he spoke rightly about the plight of those who were taken for 50 days, he forgot about the plight and the humanity of those who have been held for years and years now. Here in America, we value uh, children's rights. We continue to talk about the three-year-old, now four-year-old American citizen who was abducted on October 7th. And yes, we call and demand the, uh, her, her release and to be you know, reunited with her family. But that doesn't mean that the Palestinian people, just because they don't hold American citizenship, are less in value, are less in their humanity. So we have to question our moral compass in this country. And we have to question the claim that the president keeps putting forth, keeps asserting his moral clarity, because obviously he does not know what morality really means. Obviously, he is morally bankrupt because he cannot identify with humanity without his bias. We know that he has passion for Israel. We know that he has that connection with the, uh, with the Zionist idea, as he himself kept, uh, keeps repeating. But before all of that, he always taught, told us about how compassionate he is, how a decent person he is. But we don't see it reflected in his actions. To condition humanitarian aid to Gaza to 2.3 million people on the way Palestinian factions are responding or dealing with the Israeli occupation forces is inhuman. Call them terrorists, go after them, designate them, condemn them, but the 2.3 million Palestinian civilians have nothing to do with this and to engage in ethnic cleansing, to be aided and acted by the United States, to request funding from Congress, to resettle Palestinians in the Sinai Peninsula, and then claim that one of our red lines as the United States is no reoccupation of Gaza, not to, no to the reduction of the size of Gaza, and no for a new Nakba and mass expulsion of the Palestinian people. This is a hypocrisy because you're asking for money to resettle Palestinians in Egypt with a promise that you will be back. It's the same promise that my parent, my father, was given in 1948. But he never stepped a foot back in his homeland in Palestine. Same thing with the Palestinians in 1967. So 
I want to conclude with this. And I mentioned the attempts to delegitimize our voices. And I said we belong to the majority here in America, not to the minority. And I spoke about the McCarthyism that we're facing and we're up, ag up against here in America, trying to criminalize our voices. Go investigate them. Why? What did they do? Just go investigate them. Try to find, dig some dirt on them. But what did they do? Nothing. Uh, 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 since I'm the point of that attack, oh, he, he gave a few thousand dollars uh, uh, as part of political contributions to, Amer uh, to, mem uh, to candidates uh, or members of Congress. Okay, that's part of my hard earned money. Trying to marginalize the Muslim community, make our, um, you know, uh, our uh, practicing our constitutional, constitutionally protected, uh, protected rights, now are becoming criminalized and questioned. Why? On what basis? What basis? Am I an American citizen or not? So this McCarthyism is not going to deter us. These attempts to intimidate us, these threats that we're receiving, the threats that the Hyatt received, and as a consequence, canceled our, our, our convention, speaks to where America today is. People were saying this president was claiming that it was worse under Trump. In fact, it is worse under him because he's condoning these voices. Instead of investigating these people who are making these threats, violent threats against us, in some cases, one of our staff members in Missouri was shot at. The FBI now is questioning us, why do you think that they're coming after you? So this tells us where America is today. And we refuse to allow another era of repression to take a place in America and to start with the Muslim community because we know it starts with one people and then it's going to be uh, uh, applied and generalized to the entire society here in America. We refuse to be that weakest link and we think that we're standing as a vanguard against the new McCarthyism in America that will impact every single one and I hope our media will live up to their uh, professional standards and will cover with objectivity, not to neutrality, what is taking place in the Gaza Strip. Thank you. Final speaker will be Othman Atta, uh, an attorney and the executive director of the Islamic Society of Milwaukee. Thank you, Dean and uh I'm the other speakers. My name is Othman Atta, O-T-H-M-A-N. Last name is A-T-T-A. -T -T Just want to make a few remarks uh, with regards to the current temporary cessation of hostilities. What we are calling for is a complete and total end to this aggression. As has been brought up by other speakers, this is not a war against Hamas. It is clearly a war against the civilian population of Gaza. We have seen that more than half of the homes in Gaza have actually been demolished. Reporters that are going in uh, during this temporary truce have gone into different areas and seen the massive apocalyptic destruction that actually exists in Gaza. Nothing is standing in certain areas. People who have even tried to go back to their homes um, have found nothing. Some of those who have tried to go back to their homes in the north have actually been shot at by uh, the, the Israelis. We've also seen pictures that along the roads, where it looks like people were actually trying to flee during the relentless and inhumane bombardment, that there were people bodies decomposing along the roads where nothing was obviously removed because nobody could reach them. I think it's very important for the media here to understand something. The Israeli government is not allowing international media in unless they're embedded with the Israeli forces, and even then their reports have to be approved by the military censor. My feeling is this is not journalism. Journalism is to go in and get the truth about what is actually going on. We say that journalists are like the, fifth, the fourth branch of government, that we have to oversee what governments are doing. 
we have to bring the expo we have to expose um, if they're lying or not being truthful about what's going on. It seems that what Israel is doing is committing major atrocities in Gaza, where they're actually trying to hide it from the rest of the world. Now that we're going in, we're seeing some things, but what Israel has done is it's tried to provide a sanitized version of what's going on, and they've tried to provide their political propaganda to the journalists that are coming in. And I understand the journalists would like to get more information, um, and they've actually indicated that you know, we are limited by Israel and by its censors. But I think it's time for the journalists to get together and say, you know what, we're not going to report what the Israeli military is giving us. We're not going to listen to their spokespeople unless they allow us to send people into Gaza to basically see what's going on, to uncover the atrocities. Just the reports that are coming out now that the number of civilians, women and children, who've been killed in Gaza in these last um, weeks is more than the entire number of civilians that were killed in the Ukraine in two years. That the number of civilians that have been killed in Gaza um, in these few weeks has been more than the number of civilians recorded to be killed in the 20-year invasion that we've had of Afghanistan. That is phenomenal. I mean, that is inhumane. This 140 square miles, tens of thousands of bombs being dropped on a heavily populated um, population, this is unacceptable. We are calling for a complete and total end to this aggression, end to the slaughter of innocent women and children mainly, 70%. Clearly, Israel is lying. They have, not, they have not accomplished what they claim were their objectives to go after Hamas. We don't see that they have actually been able to remove Hamas in any way from Gaza. We don't see that at all. That means that all of the damage and destruction and the murder that's going on is an attempt to basically um, completely erase, ethnically cleanse, and engage in genocide against the civilian population of Gaza. That needs to end. We are a nation of laws. We need to apply the international laws um, and international conventions, not as was indicated earlier, as President Biden is saying, oh, we're making sure they're doing it. No, you're not making sure. You're not doing anything. You actually didn't even do anything for the American citizens who are stuck in Gaza, those who are originally Palestinians. You did really nothing for them for weeks until finally there was an opening where they were supposed to, uh, or given the opportunity to leave. Just to end with one more thing. Israel, unheard of in the history of war, of 2.3 million people cut off food and water and electricity and fuel for hospitals and ambulances and other things. And we know that now a little bit is coming in. It used to be 500 trucks a day going in. Now they're allowing, just during this temporary truce, maybe 200 trucks. This isn't going to do anything. How much, if you have 2.3 million people there, what is a hundred trucks? What, each truck is going to serve how many people? It doesn't make any sense. We need to make sure that humanitarian aid goes in there unhindered, particularly water and food and the medical supplies and um, fuel for the hospitals. And the last item, and I'm sorry, but I'm going to just say one more thing. Last item was about Al-Shifa Hospital and the destruction of hospitals in Gaza. Most of the hospitals have been completely damaged. The pictures that just came out since the truce of um, Al-Shifa Hospital shows absolute destruction that Israel force, Israeli forces actually committed outside and inside the hospital. They have always been, and they kept repeating, that, oh, this is a command post for Hamas, and this is probably where they have hostages, and they found nothing. The tunnels... And the room that they found 
Ehud Barak, the former prime minister of uh, Israel, actually told the CNN that it was built by Israel while they were occupying Gaza. And so they knew that there are a several tunnels, and they knew that there's a room um, that's underneath the hospital, but they haven't been able to prove that Hamas was there or anyone else was there because there was nothing there. But they still justified the destruction of the hospital. And if you remember, John Kirby and others said, oh, we believe the Israeli propaganda that there, this is a command post for Hamas. It, it was not, but they still destroyed the hospital. We must stand for the humanity of the people there. People are dying. Children are dying and being slaughtered. They're using their hands because they don't have tools to try to recover them from under the rubble. This is inhumane. This is not humanity. Our country that is providing so much money and military must do something about this. We have the means to do it. We were able within days to, draw, to, to deliver weapons to Israel for them to commit these atrocities. We must be able to do more to provide humanitarian assistance, assistance and, and to, to make, make sure, sure that this onslaught, this mur murder of Gaza comes to an end. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. That concludes our press conference. Um, if there are any clarifications or any questions, we'll be available for a few minutes for that. Thank, Thank you. you.